an accelerated therapy for a debilitating psychological condition. More 4 is about to enter the house of obsessive compulsives. Here on Channel 4, obsessively clinging to the past, the cobwebs are coming down in Ramsey's kitchen nightmares. This programme contains strong language from the start and throughout. This week, I'm in Derby for my biggest challenge yet. A god-awful Italian restaurant that's stuck in a time war. It sounds like prices that were in existence fucking 10, 15 years ago. A truly miserable kitchen. I've been saying it for three days, we haven't got a pot washer. Nobody's done a fucking thing about it. With appalling food. The chicken's raw, and I don't want to catch salmonella in fucking Derby. Unless I can help, her new owner, Daniela, has just spent half a million quid on a sinking ship. Oh, we might as well close down now and I can save my money. When the gondola opened in 1968, its Italian owners brought the glamour of Venice to Dowdy Derby. And it instantly became the place to be seen. You couldn't get into this place unless you booked two or three weeks in advance. The place was packed, had wonderful atmosphere, and it had a reputation then of being the best restaurant in Derby. Daniela celebrated her 21st birthday at La Gondola. She even got married in the restaurant. She loves it so much, six months ago, she bought the company. But just what had she bought? God fucking hell. Marbella in Derby, fucking hell. The size of it. A 125-seater restaurant with a 21-bedroom hotel attached. A big undertaking, especially if the state of the outside is anything to go by. Fuck me, even the gondola looks fucked. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Ramsey. Gordon. Gordon. And? Daniela. Daniela, how are you? Fine. <laughs> Good. Pleasure for seeing you. Uh, Thank you for coming to uh, our Not at all. God, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's like going back in time. It is. It's a bit of a time warp. Um, how old is it? Um, nearly 40 years old. Really? Even the floorboards are... I know, creaky. Creaking as well. Fantastic. Anyone under there? Uh, no, there's the wine cellar. Oh, okay. My lovely old wine, so yes. Fantastic. Through. It's Friday night, and eight o'clock, and we can hear a few clinking plates in there, but um, the place sounds empty. How many booked for dinner? Four. Four? Yes, a table of four, and that's all. And that is our problem. We have this beautiful restaurant, and it's empty most of the time. One question I've got to ask. Why the hell did you buy it? if you've never run a restaurant or a hotel before? Well, when my mother died and I went through a divorce, it was the one thing one night that kept me going. And I thought, that's what I'll do. I'll buy La Gondra. And mm. all night long, I just dreamt of this place. Oh, some customers coming now. Sorry. OK. Good night. Good night. Good night. Did you enjoy dinner? Yes, thanks. Excellent. Damn, I think they left their teeth on the table. From its 70s chandeliers to its plastic flowers, the restaurant is well and truly past it. Please release me, let me go. <laughs> it's like stepping back in time, isn't it? It is. And I wondered whether, should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns and come back to oh. it? I mean... But it'll be too late if the business goes down the pan first. Everywhere you look, um, it's like a flashback to the 70s. Even the food sounds, you know, that dated. Smoked salmon, honeydew melon with port, warm brie with a tomato tart. The menu is massive, nearly 100 dishes, and very few of them actually Italian. Um, I'd like to start with the um, spaghetti bolognese, please. Spaghetti Because yeah, the food's <coughs> Italian. Yes. So it's fresh spaghetti. Thank you. I've ordered the simplest starter on the menu but it seems to be taking a very long time. Get him on some fucking proper spaghetti now. He's going to give the fucking ancient shit that was in there. Gareth, 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 you, you do it. Don't worry. The problem in the kitchen. That's been very good to order, so. Oh, love. Nice, thank you. I apologise about the weight, because he said the pasta was cooked to order which, if you only got four <laughs> customers in the evening, fucking right, it's going to be cooked to order. Big portions, for a starter. 
six pound fifty is huge. And mounting a spag bowl and a salmon main course to come. All for six pounds fifty. No wonder they're losing money. Right, Gareth, see if you can get a tin of lobster soup open without me seeing you. I've just seen something very dodgy the silver serving vegetables. And even in 1999, silver service of vegetables like that was 25 years too late. Thank you. The salmon is also massive, and like the restaurant, a bewildering trip through time. As the years have progressed, they've just added more onto it. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's 1975, let's stick a mussel on there. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's 1980, let's stick some monge too on there. Do you know what? It's 1985, ratatouille's in, stick some ratatouille on there. And it's 1990. Welcome back, the roast spud. Quantity, not quality. A classic 1970s mistake. And surprise, surprise. How are you? Head chef Steve Strawn nice started here in 1975. Good, good, good. I've never seen mm. such massive portions in my entire life. Right. Doesn't need the prawns. Doesn't need the um, mussels. It's described on the menu as that. So yep. I've, I've got to follow through with what's on the menu. But I mean, you've been here for that length of time. You could change that and just do a simple poached salmon dish without all I that. I could do. I could do. Yeah. You know, there's two ways in this industry. You move with the times, mm -hmm. or the times moves you. And unfortunately, you've been caught in a time warp. Mm -hmm. In my experience, when a restaurant's been stuck in a rut for so long, rot starts setting in. Staff get really lazy. They start cutting corners, and they really need to discover exactly what's going on here. Today there's a 70th birthday party in the restaurant. Functions are the lifeblood of La Gondola, but there's not even enough of those to stop it dying on its arse. At the moment for this year I've got nine weddings booked, but really we should be aiming for about 30 weddings a year and then that would be very nice. With 25 covers, it's a chance for me to see how the kitchen copes when they have more than four people through the door. I've done four and four. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes in, the kitchen's already in trouble. They've run out of fresh tuna steaks. You know what you're going to have to do? Plan B. Fuck knows what they're going to do. It's called Plan B. Do you know about Plan B? Plan B. Plan B. Plan B. No. no, I don't. Uh, what's Plan B when he's at home? Oh, tins, that's what it means, right. Tin tuna, banged out on limp lettuce, my gran would have been ashamed to have served that. It doesn't feel like a kitchen, no energy, no excitement, no... passion, really, and sort of care, and love for food. Just get in the bowl and fuck off out of here. Now, there's a problem with the mains. Oh, sorry, it's no sauce? I'm oh, no sorry. sauce, all, all plain. All plain, yeah. Where does it say plain on there? It doesn't. Well, I don't know what I can do about that. Steve's straight on the phone to Stella, the business manager. Yeah, but it doesn't say plain on the menu, does it? We, we never serve a plain. <laughs> Chef's wrong again. Never the office. Oh, Not really. Just sort it out on Monday. It would have said lobster sauce if you wanted lobster sauce. Stella cocked up the order for the lobster sauce, but instead of rolling his sleeves up and getting on with it, Steve picks a fight. Are you going upstairs, Stella? I just asked Danielle to come wash some pots, that's all. I've been saying it for three days we haven't got a pot washer. Nobody's done a fucking thing about it. You're in charge of the kitchen, Steve. It's your department. You yeah, should say Dan. You wash your hands with it, Dan. While they're all bickering, the waiters are still serving the main course. It's a shambles. La Gondola wants to be a high-class restaurant, and yet they're slopping out reheated catering rubbish. Belgium apple pie. What's Belgium about it? Did you buy them in? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But from a chef to chef's point of view, you yeah. know damn well yeah. an apple pie. Oh yeah. We, 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 we can exactly. do with our eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you're telling me now that you're happier to buy them in rather than make them? At this moment, no. I'm, I'm happier to make myself, but right. I don't have the staff or the skills or the time to do okay. it. How long does it take to make I mean, an apple pie? Half an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah. Microwaving? Yeah, yeah. What this guy needs is a rocket up his ass. This is a fucking doddle for you, isn't it? Yep. It's not exactly ball breaking here, is it? 
has been in the past, and it can no, be. It can, stop yes, going it, back. It, talk it, today. No, it's almost like we're no, paying for your memories no, again. today is quiet. Right. Bring it back. I'll still handle it. Fucking hell. Okay. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Daniela sank half a million quid of her divorce settlement into La Gondola. But last year alone, it lost 75 grand. If she doesn't open her eyes to what's happening in her kitchen, she'll be left with nothing but memories and debts. Let's be brutally honest, you fell in love with the place and you grew up in it and you had your 21st birthday party, you had your wedding here, and you have bought a fucking time bomb. I've never seen a kitchen like that that just has so little atmosphere, no um, banter, no communication, no vibrant, let's get ready for a, a great lunch. It was um, turkey going in, cooked the day before, reheated. Um, I'm horrified that we had that. If you're telling me a discerning customer cannot tell the yeah. difference. But I think what you've really got to pick up on and wake up on is the fact that your chef can lose his self-esteem by serving that shit. They've carved a very comfortable niche out for themselves and they've made a really comfortable bed to lie in and unfortunately you're paying the price for that. I'm pretty pissed off, you know that. I'm not happy because what I saw yesterday across the board I thought was a fucking disgrace. La Gondola in Derby. At first I thought this restaurant's problem was that it was stuck in a time warp. But it goes far deeper than that. It's 10 o'clock and head chef Steve and his number two Gareth are only just rolling up for work. You wouldn't get away with that in my kitchen. Especially as last year the restaurant lost 75 grand. And these guys just don't seem to be interested in turning the place around. How much has the restaurant taken this week? Barely. Yeah. 500 quid. Yeah. The salaries alone in the kitchen are a thousand pounds. If the restaurant didn't have these functions that are drip feeding into this establishment, yeah. you wouldn't have a job. I personally want to put a fucking rocket up everyone's ass in here today to really make them understand what you should be doing and not bickering and festering on fucking memories from 20 years ago. That means fuck all. It's Sunday lunchtime and there are three diners at the gondola. When there isn't a function on, well, nothing much happens in this kitchen. Right, we are away. We're away. Please. Chef's away as well, he's been away for 30 fucking years. Mains away, chef, please. Not quite ready, Ad. Not quite ready. This kitchen is like a retirement home. So how many evenings do you work a week? Three? Three to four, depends on the business, really. Yeah, just to play it by, yeah. It varies. Yeah, what a bizarre setup. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Thank you. They've been coming for... 36 years. 36 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So you are the asset? Yes. So, um, if the food was to change, you wouldn't come back? No. No. If what you've got? You've got minestrone soup? Minestrone yes. soup, which is... But La Gondola are going to have to risk losing their three regular diners because this is a terrible environment for an aspiring young chef. Number two, Gareth, is only 19, but he's already given up. He was good, wasn't he? They must be soul destroying when the business is so quiet, no? Yeah. Um, Motivation-wise, no? It's boring. Yeah, very boring. When it's quiet, you just like clock watching until it's 10 o'clock and yeah. so you can go, because we can't go early in case someone does come. No. So it's just, you just clock watching all the time. And yeah. I've only seen one person in this kitchen with any real drive or ambition, and that's 17-year-old apprentice, Danny Holden. You right, Danny boy? You're doing a fucking yeah. good job. Yeah, my pleasure. That's where it all started, you know that? I've been in there. Lonely place in amongst all those bubbles. Huh? But trust me, if you get your shit together in there, it goes from bubbles on top of the sink to bubbles in glass of champagne. Would you like a glass of champagne? I'm not old enough. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll sneak it in the fridge. OK, then. Yeah? Yeah. Young chefs need encouragement. But discipline is high on Steve's list of priorities. I don't stand any nonsense. You don't stand no. any nonsense? No, no. And if these don't make it, they go. I've told them all. Out. I don't, I'm not standing for nothing. This one might not last a week. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, yesterday, yesterday was very close. I don't hang around with one warning and two warnings. No? Out the fucking back door, mate. So what you're saying, so you're worse than what, me? What, what, no, what I'm saying is, I don't like shit. 
Yeah. Out to go. Isn't that right, Gareth? You're no good. You walk. Steve thinks he can talk the talk, but can he really walk the walk? This time I checked out his store cupboard. God, oh, fucking hell. Fucking evidence. So, I mean, it looks like fish food, doesn't it? Huh? And it smells fucking disgusting. There you go. It's half a container of plastic minestrone soup. Right. Now, we've seen it all smash. Um, what in the fuck a chef does with that, I don't know. The new owner, Daniela, wants La Gondola to be an authentic Italian restaurant, and yet she's completely unaware what's happening in her own kitchen. Um, the minestrone soup is quite a hallmark. It is. Yeah. It's very good. It's excellent. Almost as good as my mother's. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it's great. Why'd you buy it in, Steve? I don't buy it in. I make it myself. So the containers are bought in minestrone soup and the invoice is here? What we do, we'd, we'd mix that 50-50. Uh -huh. We'll sort of give half and half, really. Is okay. it, it, it seems to be... Yeah, I'm not clear. What do you mean? Two yeah. bowls? One of no, plastic no, no, and no, one... No, no, no. We'd make half up with perhaps packet and then put fresh in to it as well. Steve's penny-pinching by bulking up the fresh soup with powdered. But the prices are so out of date on the menu, they're hemorrhaging money on a daily basis. The cost of the lamb, nothing more, just mm. the lamb cutlets. Yep. That whole dish, okay, should be on the menu at £16.50. Right. You're selling it at £10.90. Mm -hmm. But the scary thing is, Steve, that you yeah. don't know that every time we sell that lamb, yeah. we're losing five quid. Yeah. Yeah. And if we had a table of four in today, yeah. and they walked in that door, yeah. I swear to God, it'd be a lot easier to fucking stop them at the door and say, there's your five pound, mm. fuck off. Well, oh, we might as well close down now and I can save my money. You know, I'm guided by people who've been here for years and they're telling me they can make money out of that menu. But you were here in place, in position as the manager when oh, this was put yeah. together. So sorry. you can blame I'm me all sorry. you like, but it's my let's, money, Steve, not yours. I know, yours, I know I mean, it's your money. Let's, let's, let's carry on, let's put a structure in place. Your, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Let's put a structure. Ten pound per room, ten pound per meal. Where Listen, money, where, it's where my restaurant where, and where, I, where, all where I needed to do was cover costs, all right? And I did more than cover costs on that. This is Stella who does all this, not us. I think you're shouting the um, wrong person. Look, Stella does look, this. Not... Don't go off saying this, that and the other. You could be out of a job in a month's time. No one is taking responsibility for La Gondola's problems. Everyone just blames each other. I look at you and I get really nervous. Because I think you're the kind of cook that's just going to fuck off out here, you know that? I think you're going to get upset one day after listening to the way you spoke to the owner. If that was me, I would have sacked you. And my worry is, you're so determined to fucking work in this industry, you need to get excited. You need to start cooking properly. I've got to get these guys out of this god-awful kitchen and try and lift their morale. So I'm taking them to see one of Derby's most successful businesses. Yeah, Gareth, you drive. Yeah, we're going to look at some history. Right, let's go and look at something beautiful, something that's moved with time. Rolls-Royce, 1933. Look at it, beautiful. Now, the next one is something quite interesting because this was made in 1979. Look at it, a bit of history. That Rolls-Royce didn't sit still, yeah, and get moved by the times. They decided to move ahead of the times, the Phantom. What's it like in there, Danny? It's nice and comfy. It nice looks and like comfy. I'm in business. And Steve, yeah. do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They've moved on. Yeah. They haven't just stood there and sort of expected Rolls Royce to sell. Yeah. And unfortunately, big boy, when I first saw your food, yeah. I felt like I was stepping in a time capsule. Yeah, I get your point. It's, 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 it's marvellous. It's marvellous, absolutely. I know a chef who's got one of these. You know that? And you're thinking, Gareth, what should I do? Rob a bank or work hard? Rob a bank. Rob a bank. <laughs> okay, now, bollocks. Uh, should we nip round and see your mum, Danny? The engine that powers any successful restaurant is its kitchen. And like Rolls-Royce, La Gondola is going to have to create its own modern classics. I'm starting with that lunch menu. What's the secret behind any good Italian restaurant? Pasta. Pasta, exactly. When was the last time you made fresh pasta? Never have. 
There we go. You're making it. I'm just going to tell you how to make it. So make it well in the centre. That's it. I'm keeping it simple so the chefs have got time to get up to speed. Out goes the old two-course lunch menu for £6.50. In comes a fresh pasta main with a salad and a glass of wine for £8.95. See the colour is starting to change now because the saffron's working on there. Fresh pasta is the hallmark of an authentic Italian restaurant. Its simplicity also makes it a money spinner, far cheaper than those expensive lamb specials. See the colour of it? All of it. Ricotta in. And I want you to taste it as you're doing it. There you go. Now, OK, watch. Yeah, like a parcel, exactly, look. Fold it over. Nip all the air out. Little finger. Over. Left to right, right to left. Use your thumb and push. Totally. Who'd like a go? Yeah, of course you can have a go. Here we go. We've only been making pasta for ten minutes. And already the young chefs look like they're enjoying themselves. I finally injected some passion into this kitchen. Good. That you've just done. That was ten minutes ago. That was your first one. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's your first. You've never made pasta. And now you've made your first ever tortellini. That's very good. Well I've asked Danny the Apprentice to come up with a couple of salads for the new menu. Right, uh, what I've done is I've put like tomato and that in the mixing bowl. Good. And, and with the shots and you put like this, that, and like that sort of vinegar stuff over it. And Good. I'll in it, so. Okay, have a little taste. Eat with me. And this one is a... Is rocket and parmesan. Good man. Cheers. That's lovely. But La Gondola's problems aren't just in the kitchen. To help me relaunch the sinking ship, I've called in the boss of the company that does all my restaurants PR, Joe Barnes. What do you reckon? Well, it certainly makes a first impression. Up the creaky stairs. Wow. Hi, Dan. Hello. Amazing chandelier. And you look at the dance floor, just how many heels I've been dancing on this. You can kind of see El Deco doing a special yep. on, you know, interiors yep. frozen in time. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a sellable asset here? Do you think you could sell this restaurant? My first feelings when I come in, and I don't mean to be negative, are start all over again. This place badly needs a refurbishment. Yeah. Um, you can refurb it, you can yeah. call it a new name yeah. and start over and really relaunch it. Yeah. However, being really... The money. Fine. No. What it no. does have is a tremendous amount of authenticity and kind of kitschy appeal. Yeah. And I love the sort of, you know, the Doric columns and the dance floor. And I suppose you've got to work with what you've got. Daniela and her business manager, Stella, need Joe's help. Because so far, their marketing efforts have hardly set Derby alight. I can't even find it on here. It's supposed to be under restaurants, under Continental. Oh, there we go. Jesus Christ. So we go past all these um, relaxing massage and all these whorehouses. Um, and you come down here. And then you get La Gondola. Try our new menus. Booking's now been taken. I mean... You know, you've missed it. I think what you've got to do is identify what your real strengths are here, and that's the family-run business, that's the, the great space you've got with the dance floor, and make them into selling points. You've got to have a punchy message with which you can appeal to your potential customers. Now the restaurant reputation has disappeared. Yet the you've reputation got, you... hasn't disappeared. The problem is that people have forgotten about La Gondola. When it hasn't talk... got a bad reputation, definitely not. So it's, it's a good times... reputation? See, again, you're living in the Medium. past. I, I feel you're not being honest with yourself. It has a shit reputation. It hasn't. I'm telling you it has. So you've been to Derby and you've had a word yeah. with all of the customers. Oh, no, hold on a minute. Of all of the pay. customers. There are no customers. The place is empty. So and you're it... telling me that the people who put adverts in the mm -hmm. paper thanking us yep. for a superb wedding, etc. You're missing my point. If you just listen to what I'm trying to tell you, mm. it may make sense in a minute. The add-ons from having a successful restaurant is phenomenal. We haven't got that reputation any longer. Yeah. The business is on its ass, And the functions over the last 10 years have depleted, accepted. There is no reputation at La Gondola. And if you're going to stand there and tell me it's a good place, when a chef buys in minestrone soup, no chance. We need to spread the word around Derby that La Gondola is changing. So I've told Stella to get on the phone and round up members of the city's business community for a special lunch. A great way to get the message out and a chance to see if Steve can lead his team. My father used to come here for business lunches about 25 years ago. Uh, but in recent times, I have to say, it's not a place that I would have come to. The idea of this lunch today is to get them in and out in 45 minutes. We've banished silver service to speed up the waiters. But can Steve run his kitchen fast enough to keep up? Well, they were busy, quiet, makes no difference to me. I only know one way, and that's the way I do it. Check on. Yeah, you ready to roll with us, yeah? Yeah. Good man. This is the exciting part of the day. Yeah? Okay. 
Let's go. I want you to clean out the plates. Yep. Yeah, good boy. Let's go. One for tartar, one bruschetta, one tagliatelle. Nice. The new pasta dishes I've devised are hitting the spot. Get the three cents there, compliments. That's the first. Quality, yeah, not bad. Very good price as well. But uh, a little bit slow coming out, just a little bit slow. People having a business lunch. Once again, the lack of organisation has dropped the kitchen in it. Jesus Christ. Come on, guys, there's got to be a system in here somewhere. Steve. If you're, uh, if you're confused, yeah, let me know and I'll help you out, yeah? Okay. It's gone all quiet, you see, yeah, you're not leaving right. it like a head chef. Do you understand? Okay. Where all these three guys, including Danny, is coming together at the same time. Yep, thank but you. But they've got to take your direction, you know that? Yeah, fine. Yeah. When you ask for it, we'll do, we'll do it fresh. Outside in the restaurant, there are lots of customers waiting, but all the orders have become mixed up. So, you sent table four, yeah? Three tagliatelle, tell you one knocking, one bruschetta. Yeah. Yeah. They've sent them, they've just come back, and so said yeah. they're on coffee, you've already sent their main course. Yeah. And now, a whole table has got the wrong dishes. Okay. Start again anyway, it's, 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 gone, it's gone stone cold. What about the starters on table eight? They have it already. They've had them. Why is it not crossed off, Steve? No wonder the kitchen's confused. So if you send the starters, why are you crossing it off? Right, table two starters, yeah, this is. That was just 35 covers. I'm planning to completely relaunch the restaurant in only a couple of days' time, with double the number of customers. I'm starting to wonder if Steve is really up to it. So, what, what has come out of today's lunch, you know that, yeah. is how everyone just works on their own, you know that? Yeah. I've seen I think, no I think fucking team spirit here whatsoever. No, no, no understanding, no coordination, and bringing these guys together has been a fucking nightmare. I know. Fucking hell, I tell you, I'm finding it hard. I'm finding it really fucking hard. Because it's not about teaching an old boy new tricks, it's about getting the old boy to wake up and stop being a lazy bastard. A simple risotto, bruschetta, frittata, tagliatelle of chicken, and they're still in the ship. La Gondola is up the creek without a paddle. The kitchen's getting by with 14 apple pies and the staff don't pull together. I don't know which way you're having to in less than 48 hours, a new owner, Daniela, is relaunching the restaurant. I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning. I uh, don't often, s often swear, but I was shit scared. The trouble is, Daniela's head chef has been treading water, opening a tin of tuna or a packet of powdered soup. I want to redesign the menu for the relaunch, but what can Steve actually cook? I've asked him to prepare me a dish using fresh ingredients only. So what's in there? Butter. We've got butter. Red onions. Red onions. A little bit of olive oil. Yeah. Fennel. Fresh fennel. And just a little bit of orange zest. Mm-hmm. Flour. And where did this idea come from? When I was a commie, we used to do it. Um, when I worked down in Oxford. Down so here. 35 years ago? Quite a long time, yeah. yeah. Steve is cooking me a dish of rustic Italian trout. That smells gorgeous. And then we can dress it up. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit miffed when you're frying the um, the trout. The fact you hadn't taken the scales off. Right. So already I've got to eat this with a pile of shit in my mouth. Why didn't you scale the fish? Sorry. Just time, I suppose. Time. Yeah. yeah. It looks like you forgot. I think that's pretty dismal. Yeah. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that part of shit, I'm fucking mm. gobsmacked. Mm. The scales are on there, it's all in the roof of my mouth, the fucking alcohol's not burnt off, it's... Mm. Fucking hell, Steve. After Steve's dismal effort, I want to find out if the other chefs can do any better. Tuna's very tasty. You don't need that sauce. For me, you've just fucked that dish by putting that glue on there. Yep. That sort of gloppy, stodgy yes. wallpaper paste that, in fact, I'd offer that to Daniela to fucking plaster the front of the gondola, you know that? Because that looks like a pile of shit there as well. What, what's, that, what's that in there? Inside. Yeah. Oh, you, the chicken's inside? Yeah. Is this a Polish dish? No, no. Yeah. The chicken's raw. Raw. Now, um, unfortunately, I, uh, I can't afford to fuck off and die right now, and mm. I don't want to catch salmonella in fucking Derby, so um, put that straight in the bin. 
Yeah. yeah. I've been poisoned once before and it's not going to fucking happen again. It's so scary. We really are in trouble here. I've never sent this message out before in a restaurant. I'd tell them, fucking move your ass, get on with it, otherwise you're out. But I'm going to tell you guys to stop and give up. Don't fight it if you don't want to change. And when that change comes in, be prepared to work fucking hard. We've got to get rid of all this crap. We can't carry 80, 89 dishes. What's it like when this man's off in the night and you've got 25 books? It must be mad, no? When you cook like that, do you actually think that you're fit enough to call yourself a chef if you're defrosting things and deep frying mushrooms? And is it important for you to cook or are you really seriously interested in staying the way you are? Cook. You are, you, you definitely want to cook. Yeah? No. All right, there's nothing complicated in this, no. The only option is to go right back to basics. I've devised a new dinner menu that's so simple, hopefully it's foolproof. A light gnocchi with salmon and tarragon, and a simple tomato and mozzarella risotto. That's the tomato juice, yeah. it's just a little bit too thick. Too thick, yeah. Even this kitchen surely can't cook these dishes up. Fresh, fragrant mix. Stand up, please, Steve. Thank you. Gareth. It's really hard for you to understand at 19 how modern we're trying to put the approach. Yeah. yeah, nothing's coming out of the fucking packet, nothing's coming out underneath, cooked fucking three days ago. It's just clean, fresh, and just think back to that phantom, that roller. Well, is it worth getting out of bed in the morning? Yeah, fucking right it is. Good. Really easy. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't all stick. And he's never been given his own section. So I'm going to see how he does with the vegetables. You've got to look after them, you know, like, almost as if you're sort of in love with them. Yes, you look. Are. Beautiful. It's warm, isn't it? It's very warm, isn't it? Huh? Welcome to the real world of the kitchen, big boy. You're sweating. Yeah. Huh? That looks cool. First time. Is it, Is it the first time you're sweating? In the kitchen, yeah. Good man. Yep. So now we've done the uh, peppers. Yep. The aubergine. The butternut squash. Yes. And now. All of a sudden, big boy, over the last couple of hours, yes? You've been running the vegetable section. Mm -hmm. Move your ass. We now have a new contemporary menu Good for the relaunch. So Time to in. chuck out the chintz. Stella, let me ask you something. You're sat. Just come and touch us a minute. And close your eyes and just touch it. Close my eyes and touch yeah. it. Yeah. Horrible. Fucking disgusting. Dirty, Dirty no. grubby, smelly, hey. plastic hey. flowers. Yeah? The clutter on the tables. Martin, it's look at those all yeah. come out of the fucking pound shop. Okay. You know, you're like an old fucking woman that just won't throw anything away. Yep. Get rid of it. It's yeah? going tonight. Good. It's like going to a, um, an airport lounge and looking at one of the chapels of rest. <laughs> it's the kind of thing you'd see in there when you sort of sit down and grieve. I mean, I'm sorry, but they're fucking awful. Catch, get hold of them all and lob them in the skip. Yeah? Pleasure. Yeah, good man. <laughs> Already? Whew. I feel like, fucking hell, I got rid of my granny's pants. They're off. They're no longer up here. I'm starting to think about wearing a nice, sexy pair of knickers because I've just seen the white tablecloth go down. That's how I feel in here. It looks clean and yeah. fresh. Would you wear knickers up to there, Stella? Oh, don't start, Gordon. Stick I'm to the restaurant. I'm just not asking. <laughs> Would you wear a pair of no, granny knickers no, up to I here? Wouldn't. No, so get rid of the flowers. <laughs> but I have discovered one thing from the past worth hanging on to. So this is from the whole classic menu we used to wear. Uh -huh. Yeah. All done Which, on the table? All done on the table. And so now you've stopped it because it's on the yeah, old menu? Yeah, I mean, at one time, Saturday night, it used to be just one person just do the cooking all night. So you're taking that to what? Lightly brown? Just go, nice and golden brown. I've asked Martin for a demo because I think the flambés are due for a comeback. Jesus Christ. Did you miss this? Oh, yeah. You're so fucking good at it. Yes, I hope so. I've tried doing my best anyway. But this should be the um, hallmark of the restaurant, this. This is, um, this is art. Thank you. Pleasure. Christ almighty. If they taste as good as they look, fucking they're hell. going back on the menu. Mm. They're to die for. They are fucking delicious. Who needs a wine list when you get pissed on the dessert? It's the day of the relaunch. 
as well as bringing back the flambés, I've decided to resurrect the gondola's dance floor. A house band is booked and the waiting staff finally look the part. There will be 70 covers in tonight, double the numbers of diners that we had in for the business lunch. It's a real test for the kitchen. They're really going to have to pull together if they want to carry it off. I've put Danny in charge of the staff dinner. They don't normally have them here, but they're a great way yeah, to build team idea. spirit. What else have you got? Most important thing about staff dinner, big boys, clear out the fridge, yes? Okay. Uh, we've got to move now, big boy. We've got ten minutes to get this ready, yes? Steve, I think you could really take his, uh, his own little sort of world there, doing these staff lunches and that. You know that. We'll give him that little yeah. vote of confidence. Yeah, why not? Huh? Unfortunately, Steve yeah. doesn't seem very confident. With only an hour until the first guests arrive, I'm worried. No? So, you're running around getting all your plates and bits and bobs, but mm. I saw that a week ago. You're all boxed off. No, I, I was intended to go around in the mall and just make sure everybody knows what's, what's yep. going on tonight and what I need and when I show up for it, what I want, yep. when but I it, want it's, it. It's all very well, it's in yeah. your mind, but yeah. the, the, the well, that's problem what I'm is... Saying. I've got to talk know, to them now. It's sort of, you know, yeah. offloading it and get yeah. them to understand. Sure. Yeah? sure. There's a feeling there, but I'm not sure if it's nervousness or not. I get stressed as much as anybody else. I'm only, I'm only human, so... Maybe I get stressed more than anybody else, I don't know. Mm. Oh, the result is gorgeous. Congratulations, Daniel. That's really good. Steve, you're not eating? Oh, well, I've had two meals since last Friday. You've had two meals since last Friday? Yeah, I'm just off it at the moment. Thank you. I'm really worried about Steve. He seems very, very nervous. The menus we've got? Yeah. Everything is in place and ready to roll. But at the last minute, Steve bottles it. Right, listen, um, I'm running the hot plate tonight. I shouldn't really have been running the hot plate, but Steve's asked if I'd run the hot plate to make sure that we get up to speed. Yeah, communication, chemistry, understanding, yeah, working for each other. Yeah, Gareth, yeah, what are we going to do tonight if you get flustered and frustrated? What are you going to do? Ask for help. Yeah, and take it out on your what? Pasta. That's right, <laughs> take it out on your pasta. <laughs> Not Daniela. <laughs> Enjoy it. Smile. I'll be behind you every ounce of the way. Smile. Order on. One tortellini, one parma ham with figs, one antipasto, one linguine. Main course. One gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Not one fucking answer. Yes, chef. Yes. Thank you. Good boy. I shouldn't be doing this. Steve needs to be able to run his kitchen properly himself. So. I'm only going to get him started. So, three minutes on the hot plate. One gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Yep. Steve, tomorrow, you're on your own. And I just wish that you implemented a system like this ten years ago, big boy. You know that? I do. So it wouldn't be so fucking hard now at the age of 51. Yeah. Well, got some on top of it. Thank you. 14, go. Right, Gareth, watch the cooking on the pasta, please, yeah? Next time, I'm going to be down on your bollock. Two lamb, one ribeye, one tuna. Yes, chef. Yeah? Nicely. Put it on that plate nicely. As if you're in love with it, yeah? Fresh tarragon on the top. Come on. How does it feel to be cooking normally? <laughs> no, no, no. Different. Yeah, Different. no, no, no. No, no, but, no, 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 no it's exciting. Once we get the, the, in the system, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the only way, Steve. Yeah. Yeah? yeah sure. I can stay here and run this, yeah. but you're fucking benefiting jack shit, mate. True yeah? enough. You're going to have to do it yourself now, you know that. Yeah. Run your kitchen and run your team. Yes, okay, and if I hear you silent and not talking to them, yeah? yeah. Hey, yes, I'm going to ram that fork up your ass. Nice. It's a big one. Yeah? yeah. Fucking yeah. right. <laughs> For the first time in 15 years, Martin's back, cooking up a storm with a flambe. Good music, efficient and stylish table service. At last, La Gondola is swinging again. Three lamb, two ribeyes, one tuna. Anna, can you send Joanna in, please? Don't understand what all these arrows mean. So, two medium. One well done. That's a medium, is it? So? Your first main course is three lamb. They haven't even started so? clearing the starters mm -hmm. yet, OK? Thank you. As the atmosphere in the restaurant hots up, the kitchen is going into slow motion. No. Cross it off. What about that other table of four here? Two ribeye, one tuna, one salmon. OK. You've got all quiet. Where's that salad? Ready? Right, tuna. 
When the kitchen does get the food out, it's going down a treat. I've never seen a lady clean a plate so quickly in my life. It's like taking a portable dishwasher out for dinner. It's been beautiful, really, really nice to enjoy authentic Italian. Been very nice. If they, if they stand up to the reputation that they set tonight, we'll come back. The new menu has been a success, but since I handed him the hot plate, Steve struggled, and he's only got through it by the skin of his teeth. Come on, Steve. Right. Last table. Yeah. Fucking hell. Right, Gareth. Come in here. Danny, turn off the stoves. Right, how was that for you? Truthfully. Could have been better. Huh? Could have been better. Could have been more smoother. More communication. Yeah. yeah. Who can that communication come from, Steve? Me. Hallelujah. As I've made Steve confront his demons, it's only fair that I confront okay. mine. I hate dancing. Back. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Here we go. Back. Ready? One, together. Run. Together. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. 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 In. Out. In. Out. Four. One. Two. Back. Together. Four. Back. Fucking hell. Last time my feet moved like that, I was on the fucking football pitch. It's been a bloody hard week, but I think we've shown the staff that the old gondola has life in her yet. Fucking hell. £2,000 in one night. The restaurant alone, last week, took 500 quid. Now, there's the insight to what this place is capable of doing. And it's only down to one thing. What is it, Steve? Hard work. That's all. Hard work. This kitchen was so far behind the times, even I considered throwing the towel in. We struggled through a birthday function and then a business lunch. But the dinner dance showed how La Gondola can get the good times back. I've implemented a new menu and a new ethos in the kitchen. But can they really build on the momentum when I'm not there to hold their hands? Boiling water. Danny, the apprentice, does have the makings of a good chef. You've seen over the week that you can cook in the star food. It's a really nice thing for you to do yes. today. Huh? I said to him the other day, I said, I want to cook. I don't want to be like stuck on pots and that. No, you're too good for that. Gareth also has a chance of making it if he knuckles down. You've learnt me more stuff than he has in three years, really. Mm -hmm. There's someone deep down inside there that's tucked away, that's oh, dying to learn. Wants to come out. Well, wants to come out. So fucking get it out. Last week but done, Steve so. still worries me. Or it's more atmospheric. Mm. I think you've fucking forgotten the word cooking, passion, exciting. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so, you're uh, right. It's been switched off for a long time. It's all been rusted up. It's, it's, yeah. Unless we've loosened it up, it's, it's, it's just going to keep on loosening up now, I think. I'm not going to quit on it. I'm going to give it my fucking best. You see if I don't. Come back. Oh, fuck me, I'll be back. Yeah, you come back. Whether or not you'll be here when I get back will be a different matter. Last summer, I spent a week at La Gondola in Derby, my most testing kitchen nightmare. A restaurant 30 years out of date. It's like stepping back in time, isn't it? It is. And I wondered whether, should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns? No customers. It has a shit reputation. And one of the worst head chefs I've ever met. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that part of shit, I'm fucking gobsmacked. But somehow, I managed to get the place swinging again. Four months later, I'm back. Oh. And someone's in the gondola. Who on earth is that in there? God. OK. Ooh. How are you? Fine. Good. <laughs> Quick kiss. What's the matter? Well, I'd have done my hair. I'd have got changed. You don't need to do that for me. Steve. He's obviously getting ready for dinner. Steve left. He walked out. He walked out. Gave me a week's notice as soon as you left. The minute I left, he walked out? He didn't have the energy, thought about it, and he was out of here. I didn't have the him, energy? I begged him to stay, but he said, no, his mind is made up. But I think he's got a job in a pub now. Job in a pub? Yes. So what kind of food? Well, what the general manager calls ding-ding food, you put it in a microwave and out it comes. Yeah, in a way, 
I'm not that upset because if he wasn't prepared to pull on the rope and actually help get the place mm. back, who's in there now? Who's the chef? Oh, you have to see. This man saved my life. Hello, Wayne. How are you? I'm not too bad at all. Yeah, Gordon, Brilliant. nice to see you. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. So the style of the menu, what is the style of the menu? Um, style of menu, but, but not... I've only arrived yesterday. OK. Uh, so, um, so we've had no... Sorry, excuse me. We've had no chefs since... No, no, no. I did experiment with at least four other chefs. I went through one who was Feng Shui, who would only cook in a certain direction. Feng Shui. Feng Shui, yeah. Well, well, Even whatever. Wayne's pissing himself. We did research round because, it know, turns out Daniela road tested several head chefs after Steve jumped ship. At least she's trying not to make the same mistake yeah, twice. Friday, we had about 20. Well, where's <laughs> Gareth? He's still here. Uh, no, uh, well, you finished up uh, yesterday. She's been poached by Steve to go and work in a pub. When he can work here, but the money was too much of a temptation, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's shocking. I'm pissed off that Gareth didn't stick it out, but I think a clean slate is the only way forward for Daniela. Yeah, and someone was trying to constantly pull, constantly pull the wall over this woman's eyes. Absolutely. And unfortunately, because she was so nice and so gentle, everybody was taking the piss out of her. And it's becoming a laughing stock. Absolutely. Now she's got the bull by the horns, she shook it, and she got rid of the fucking cobwebs. Please tell me Danny's here. He's working, he's working tonight. He's working tonight. Okay. Uh, Danny, have you missed me? Yes, I have. I've missed you too as well, you know that big man. Yeah. Huh? Yes, big man. <laughs> Little fucker. Danny's responded to my encouragement and taken up new responsibilities. Daniel, can you get the cream, please? Daniel! Perhaps he and Wayne are the dynamic duo that will give La Gondola the stability that it desperately needs. At the bottom shelf, basil. Uh, in the packet, yeah? Quick as you can, please. But the proof's in the tasting. I'm having Wayne's butternut squash soup. I hope it's better than Steve's packet minestrone. Really nice colour. That smells amazing. And, um... Mm. It's nice. It's not difficult to make. A very simple homemade rustic soup, but it, you know, it speaks volumes about a restaurant. They've built on the live music theme, Martin's still got his old magic, and he's now flambéing main courses as well as desserts. It looks fantastic. Yep. You sound brilliant, yep. and it smells amazing. Yep. You actually taste it. My very own steak, Diane. And... Steak's nice and rare. Taste is exactly how it should be. Very good. Daniela's retained my simpler, more contemporary menu, and they're cooking with fresh ingredients rather than opening a tin or a packet. And the takings have quadrupled since I was last here. That was lovely. Well, thank and I'm you. really pleased it was lovely. And you've got the simplest things right. Well, you've made me feel very brave about it, mm -hmm. and I just needed someone to open my eyes up to yeah. what's dreams and what's yeah. reality. Thank God she's woken up. She thought she'd bought success. She'd bought a restaurant full of baggage and a chef that didn't give a fuck. Now she's got the basics right, she moves forward, and this place does have a chance of surviving for the next 30 years, providing they continue. Good food, good service, bit of atmosphere, and enjoy what you're doing. It's not difficult. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Well, that's the last one for now, but you can catch up on any you've missed over on More 4, Thursdays at 10. Next here on Channel 4, Gordon Ramsay's Greatest Fear, a case of mass food poisoning in No Angels.